The Tibet Air Shower Gamma Collection Observatory consists of 600 particle detectors whose sole objective is to detect atomic particles emanating from space. The researchers report that they found what they believe to be a 24 photon initiated shower with photon energies above 100 tera electron volts, which is 100 trillion electron volts. And one of these actually exceeded 450 tera electron volts. And it is the highest that has ever been measured. So what exactly is causing this? Now they were able to track the path of these photons and found that they originated in the Crab Nebula, which is believed to be the remnants of a supernova explosion which was observed in 1052 AD by the Chinese. Now mainstream models struggle to explain how these cosmic ray photons could have gained such incredible amounts of energy. It is believed that inverse Compton scattering could cause this. Remember in the video where we looked at five alternatives to redshift, we discussed normal Compton scattering, which is where a photon imparts energy onto an electron to make it move faster. And here, high energy electrons impart energy onto the photon. Now, obviously, they would like to associate these photons with a supernova as this is one of the conditions which could create one of these events. The problem is that the Crab Nebula is about 6,500 light years away. And this supernova event occurred less than a thousand years ago. So instead, they now claim that these high energy photons are due to some unspecified process from the Big Bang. Now remember, in the Big Bang theory, photons did not start to propagate until 300,000 years after the Big Bang. So let's take a closer look at the Crab Nebula and see if there might be a more reasonable explanation for this. If we observe the nebula in visible light, we see a beautiful structure. It is about 12 light years across, and this is unlike any other nebula. It is almost like a sponge. There are filaments running right across the outer edge, and they crisscross in the middle. A closer look at these reveals very intricate detail and clearly demonstrates an interconnected nature of the material. And to me, it reminds me of Lichtenberg patterns, which are captured in acrylic blocks. Now, the visible light image hides what is actually lurking inside this giant. If we observe the image in radio, we will start to see a greater activity at the center of this nebula. These radio emissions are coming from the plasma surrounding something which is at the center. The ultraviolet image starts to reveal something brighter at the center. And if we finally switch to X-ray, suddenly the engine appears. This is believed to be a pulsar which is a rapidly spinning, highly magnetized neutron star, which emits a beam of emission from both of its poles. What is even more remarkable is that NASA have captured a time-lapse video of this pulsar, which clearly shows waves of plasma moving outward from the pulsar. On the 12th of April, 2011, NASA discovered that there was a gamma ray super flare coming from this pulsar as well and no visible change in the X-ray was detected to coincide with this event, so it was only in gamma ray that this pulse occurred. Now, the Chinese recorded a bright star event in the constellation of Taurus, and we believe that this was the supernova event which caused the Crab Nebula. Astronomers recently confirmed by examining the speed of expansion of the nebula that it could have been created around this time period in the 11th century. Interestingly, the, when they looked at these measurements, they actually found that the gas, as it moved outwards, was actually accelerating. Now, when we examine the X-ray image of the pulsar, I find it to be a very close match to some of the images seen of M87, which is supposed to be a black hole. We see the same jets emanating from the poles and there is a clear accretion torus around both. 
Now this pulsar itself is said to be rotating at 30.2 times per second. And what I find difficult to understand is that this speed of rotation would not create the X-ray image that we see. We would expect it to become blurred. Most pulsars are thought to rotate off axis to the North and South Pole. But it could be, I suppose, that this one does not. But then how do they explain the pulsing? Because effectively, by it being off axis, this creates the, the lighthouse beam effect, which is what we detect as the pulsing. Most pulses are normally restricted to a specific set of frequencies, and most often this is radio frequencies. The Crab Nebula shows this pulsing across the whole of the EM spectrum, which makes it very, very unusual. The pulses are also not simple one pulses, but there seems to consist of a number of different pulse functions overlaid across each other. Now, the normal model for pulses simply cannot explain how you would end up with uh, the pulsing across all of these frequency ranges. It simply doesn't work. Also, the image of the X-ray clearly indicates that the direction of the jets is not changing. So, what can we make of all of this in the context of a plasma and electric universe? We see clear indications of a filamentary structure, and this would indicate that current flowed through these at some stage in the past, or may still be flowing through them right now. It could be that at some point in the past, one of the main galactic Birkeland currents coming out from the central galaxy along the arm underwent a rapid and catastrophic pinch, drawing in plasma very rapidly around it, and at some point the pinch overloads, causing a rapid discharge through the plasma, just like we see when they smash a nail into the acrylic blocks to form these Lichtenberg patterns. Now this creates the filamentary structure that we see today, and at the centre a small plasmoid forms, which is what we would see as the, the pulsar. It is still partly connected to the incoming Birkeland current, producing the jets that we see in the outward movement of plasma. Now these are similar to the galactic circuit we have discussed before, so we would expect double layers to be found uh, moving outward from the central plasmoid, and these double layers will be responsible for creating the jets and the emissions that we see. If we examine the pulsing and think about it in terms of a simple circuit, you will quickly see that this circuit is pulsing at 30 Hz. So what could cause this change? Now if we assume, and at the moment this is a big assumption, that the normal Birkeland currents are direct currents, so they don't pulse backwards and forwards, they simply move in one direction. Could this explosive event have shattered the local Birkeland current, creating a sort of spark gap and an inherent capacitance in the surrounding matter? And this would mean that the charge would build up until there was enough to jump the gap, discharging the capacitance. And this would then power up the magnetic field within the nebula. As the capacitance runs out, the current would stop flowing and the magnetic field would start to collapse, creating a current in the opposite direction until it too had exhausted itself and the whole process would restart. Now this is how a Tesla coil turns a direct current into an alternating current. And this would create the pulsing effect that we see and occasionally an increase in that main incoming uh, direct current could cause the observed gamma ray bursts that we see. Now, this is all highly speculative, but I think it is time that we start examining some of these celestial phenomena more as circuits to help us to understand what might actually be occurring within them. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.